everybody, and welcome to a special mini episode of the Manga Melee podcast. As always, I am your host Jay, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by two new people to the podcast. First off, we got uh, a special friend of mine who is somebody that I will be working with very closely on some stuff for the pod in the future. That is uh, to come, so get excited for that. We have my boy Jazz. How you doing, Jazz? Hello, hello. How is everyone doing out there? My name is Jazz, and I'm excited to be on the Manga Melee podcast. Oh, yeah. You might, if you're somebody who's familiar with the Bros Who Think uh, network, then you might actually be familiar with both of these people, especially Jazz, because I know he shows up quite a bit on the uh, Bros Who Think uh, podcast as well, which is one of my favorite podcasts. If you're somebody who wants a podcast that's not about manga, just about, like, dudes talking, chopping it up about whatever is going on i highly recommend the bruce who think podcast if you want to hear if you want to hear my policies about hitchhikers check out the last episode of the bros who think podcast that was crazy honestly that was insane that's that's dangerous and it makes me want to tune in because that could go either way and that voice you're hearing is uh, someone who's very near and dear to my heart we got my twin brother in the house josh joining us for this you may recognize him from the one piece reviews he is somebody who he just thinks about shit deeply when it comes to manga and stuff, more more so than a lot of people I know. How are you doing today, Josh? I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, we got you that win earlier. I wrote up a nice little speech for my bro. And uh, now we get to talk about villainy. Mm-hmm. And by villainy, we are, of course, talking about everybody's favorite cat cyclops, Gege Akitami. Um, for those of you who are not in the know, this is a review of chapter, well... More of like the recent chapters of Jujutsu Kaisen, but it became a thing because of the leaks of chapter 212. This will be out after the official release of the chapter, so if you're current with the manga and you read the latest chapter as of the release, no spoilers in this. If you're not current, however, I honestly do not even understand why you clicked on this this, uh, podcast or link, but uh, thanks for being here anyway. So... A lot of stuff happening recently, guys. Some of it hidden. Some of it, in my opinion, not hidden as much. But building up to some truly insane revelations in Chapter 212. I think we can all agree on that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. let's We'll start off by kind of talking, like, setting the stage a bit. So, we recently had, and there will be spoilers from here on out, again... So, this is your chance to click away now if you don't want to get spoiled. Alright. Recently, we had one of our special grades that in uh, Yuki Sakumo passing away valiantly in Jujutsu Kaisen. She fought with Chozo to defend Tengen from our main villain, Kenjaku, who has been honestly taking nothing but W's ever since he showed up, basically. He's, he's, on, some Eisen, he's on his eyes and shit. More or less. I think Jazz knows what I'm talking about for sure. And Josh does oh, yeah. too. But... Uh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. That W, by the way, stands for Womb, which we can never forget. His weird master plan. Yeah. His eugenics plan that led to Itadori was truly crazy. <laughs> um, I don't have that kind of dedication. That's just what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't have that kind of timetable going for me either. So no, we, had, we had Yumi, Yuki uh, sacrifice herself to hopefully stave him off unsuccessfully so far we're unsure what the effects of her sacrifice were because after she passed away kenjaku instead of being absorbed by kenjaku or uh sorry tengen they're pretty similar instead of being absorbed by kenjaku went into a deep sleep and said goodbye my friend before we went off to see the pov of our main characters uh Itadori Fushigiro, and now we have Angel and Takaba also joining the main cast for a bit. This led to some interesting things. Uh, we had the the special forces from America coming in because cursed energy is even better than oil, which is insanity. Um, how are you guys feeling about that? How do you guys feel about the introduction of the Americans in the setting? Uh, I I think it took a lot of balls, you know, um, to make it a very Japanese centric story and then suddenly being like hey we're doing this super japanese centric thing with the Cullen games which is an art that i really enjoyed and then being like but let's check in with america though yeah like wh- where are my america booze at 
I was like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah. If something's gonna happen with Japan, America would be up to some fuck shit with it. So, I kind of like the. Uh, yeah. I, I like the. I like that because if you remember, like when when Mei Mei like dipped from Japan, mm-hmm. and I think she went to Malaysia. Mm-hmm. She was like she was on the phone. I feel like with some kind of big players, and mm-hmm. I'm not sure if Kenjaku was in that. I'm not. I don't really think like she's that much of a traitor, even though even though you know I'm a May May hater. You know what I'm saying? But uh, most people would say Star. She's hot. Yeah. She's hot, but extremely problematic. To say, say the Jazz least. taking the bold. <laughs> Jazz taking a bold stance to for once in his life not support an evil woman. Amen. Yeah, there's some you know, lines you just can't cross. You can't. You I can. Can't. I can stand the selling out other people for money, but I draw the line at incest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. You gotta, you gotta go. But I, I mean, I do like that payoff. It builds, it builds the world a little bit, and I feel like Gay Gay's slowly been building the world because, like, we also know curse, like, curse energy exists in like Africa because of like the the curse rope and everything. So I like, I like things like this. Also. The American chapters were probably like the funniest because of Gary. Yeah, he was like the Japanese yeah. should just stick to making cars and anime, and I was just like, "Yep, th- this is, <laughs> this is an accurate depiction of America." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Also, it's very nice, uh, just from like a norm perspective and a callback from all the way at the very start, because you know that we very quickly moved away from grades uh, that were sub special really being too important. Uh, but the fact that we really use, like, almost specifically the American military as the way to show what power levels in the verse are, and then now it's all coming back around by being like, oh yeah, don't worry, we're gonna see these highly trained soldiers with, like, super awesome gear to take out all these sorcerers who are total pushovers, guys. They just have dumb magic wands. Like, you can totally just use them as batteries, no problem. Look, and the literal next page was... A cursed mm. Ganesh. Yeah, that yeah. that was excellent. I loved that. I know it's not going to happen, but fan animators get on this. I would love to see Maki taking on the special forces. Like, yeah, yeah, like that Maki's would go sweet. that would go crazy. Honestly, even give her a gun during it. Let her go, John yeah. Wick, with it to fully embrace the Toji uh, mantling that's going on with Maki. Yeah, that that would be like really good for like a, almost like a Haloid type animation where it's That's super what fast, I was... super floaty. If Monty was still here, he would be going yes. crazy with this shit. Rest in peace yeah. to a goat. Um, yeah, I would love to see that sort of thing. I I feel like Gege saw how much people loved the little bit, like the taste of Star and Stripe we got in My Hero with her riding on like the mm-hmm. bomber and stuff like that. Yeah, some of the hardest panels that Hori Koshi has ever drawn, which says a lot because Hori is gifted with the pen. Period. As, even as someone who doesn't necessarily respect his writing chops, I love his art skills. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I would love to see it expanded upon more. Like we get the yeah. So I like I said, I would really like to see that expanded. And honestly, I think we could go. It doesn't even have to be all the way to America to see more sorcerers and stuff. You know. Mm-hmm. Like Russian sorcerers would probably be coming in, Chinese, Indian, and you know even sorcerers from the islands and stuff outside of Japan. Like they mentioned the Ainu sorcerers in JJK Zero as a thing, and we haven't really seen much of them. Yeah, and if you look at the Cullen game, especially at uh, chapter two eleven, right in the very first page, you can do all the little like blasty zones uh hokkaido very much is not within that loop like it literally subtracts hokkaido yeah um and also i'm just a big fan of any type of uh anything for that matter a book tv show anything that does like a kind of world tour type arc agree um it, it's tricky because you can definitely mess it up and be full-on offensive especially some older shows as we know um not every part of jojo part three is the best <laughs> uh but, you know, I mean, as long as you're willing to immerse yourself in the culture, I think it can be really awesome. Yeah, you know? and Gege has shown that he is willing to do the research for that sort of thing. He yeah. Had, he had a military advisor come in for when the they were talking about, like, the special forces invading earlier, in that earlier chapter. And he also had the uh, creator of the anime or slash uh, light novel series Licorice Recoil come in and help him with some of the gun mechanics and stuff in that too which was interesting 
Yeah, I, but like you said, I would just love to see, like, more indigenous sorcerers showing up because, you know, they either heard through their network of intelligence or if they wanted to get mystic with it, they could say that they felt a disturbance in the force, <laughs> basically, more or less. Because surely somebody would notice, like, what's going on in Japan because sorcerers and shamans, I feel like they kind of have to keep up with each other in some way, even the one... like. Like Jazz said, we had uh, Mei Mei talking with people outside of Japan about what was going on in Japan. So we know there's information right. networks and stuff, even if they are less common outside of the archipelago. Yeah, even if it's just like kind of like a black, like, because the way I, when, when Mei Mei did it, I guess like I was kind of thinking like, not that like she had like a lifeline to like any like, you know, the nation's like head, like the government. I was thinking maybe like more of like a black market type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it was some stock stuff. More I say like, yeah, like, like insider, literally insider trading type beat. Yeah, <laughs> Japan stock rising, um, and I would also say like e even if you go the other way of it being like say let's just use Hokkaido, uh, Hokkaido and the Ainu, even if they're like hey uh, we kind of all agreed like thousands of years ago y'all were gonna uh, fuck off and leave us alone, um, this destabilizes that. Which you know we also have to keep in mind the political situation of uh, Japan whenever it comes to uh, Jujutsu sorcery. And the old family and the old guard, like, you know, uh, our man Gojo's whole thing is that he wants to shake things up. Well, I think we can all agree right now the establishment is kind of getting rocked. And um, you might have to accept people from other countries and also make deals with people who you maybe want screwed over um, to get this done. Because right. Kenny, Kenny's in there. Right. Agreed. Yep. Uh, <laughs> after that, we have uh, Chapter 210, which is um, it's an offering to the unknown. It starts off with a group of children being taken care of by a cursed spirit, which is interesting. Um, shows that curse... I mean, we've seen the fact that cursed spirits... Like, people talk about the Chimera and Ark and Hunter Hunter, about how, like, you know, it makes them, like, switch sides, more or less. Like, the Chimera ants become more human, the humans become more monsterish. I think that the entirety of JJK has kind of been doing that with the cursed spirits. Not necessarily the other way around, but we've seen, like, even the disaster curses, like, they mm -hmm. cared about each other like a family unit, apart from, fuck it, nobody, like, fuck Mahito. Like, yeah. nobody cares yeah. about him. But, like, Han Mahito was doing shit. <laughs> yeah, Hanami, uh, Dagon, and Jojo, like, they, or Jogo, sorry. <laughs> they, <laughs> Jogo's bizarre adventure. Hanami, Dagon, and Jogo, they all talked about wanting to see each other when they reincarnated and stuff like that. Like, they wanted to meet each other in their next lives. And this, yeah. with the, the cursed spirit taking care of children who, you know, they mentioned that people who complain don't come back and stuff like that, which you can't, you can't ask for perfection from a cursed spirit parenting three small children, I guess. <laughs> but... It's it's better than you would think it would be, which is you think they just like eat children, I guess. Yeah, like it seems to me, especially like when you see the Fisher later, it seems like cursed spirits in their own natural way, like they run almost like on a script mm -hmm. of like what their legend or like what like you know their fear is almost. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't necessarily mean the script is all bad all the time, you know. But it could mean like you know like say this mother spirit is like distilled like. Uh, motherly love but to a toxic degree you know where it's like yeah like you're protected or whatever and you're probably going to do okay but it's kind of like how if you have a toxic parent who only wants you on a set path and if you try and go against it um they abuse you you know yeah reminds um, me of a uh, dan to dan a bit with uh yeah the yeah. dancer ghost mm -hmm. i haven't read dan to dan in so long i need to catch up on that yeah it's good, it's good i've right heard now. it's good uh, yeah. Honestly, I'll probably be more likely to catch up on it now because it seems people are slowing down on it a bit. Like not, like I used to get kind of spoiled on it, like almost every week on Twitter and stuff. And now the the people who do that are instead spoiling Chainsaw Man for everybody as soon as yeah, it they comes love out. it. They love to do it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so we get a flash forward to the past where Megumi and Itadori and Angel are interrogating a Japanese guide who was helping out the. Uh, American forces. Oh, Takaba is also there too. He calls him a Quisling, which I'm not sure what that means, but it is. Uh, Quisling, as in I believe in World War II, one of the a famous French general or whatever who like sold out to Hitler. Ah, uh, 
A traitor who collaborates with an enemy force occupying their territory. Yep, and you yes. it's the former defense uh former minister of defense of Norway. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, similar yeah. thing, similar thing. Yeah. So then Kajak, There is one for French specifically, but I can't remember what his exact name is, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh and there's one for I mean there's one for Burden too, basically, with Chamberlain. Yeah. Like, uh, and we all and, you know, we got Benedict Arnold way back in the gap. But you know, yeah. Anyway. So we have a uh, angel posits that Kinjaku is probably planning for cursed spirits to conduct a massacre on the U.S. on the special forces that are there, so they can, uh, you know, drive more cursed energy into the merger and accelerate it more or less. So they decide to go and save the special forces, even though they're trying to kill them. We get a cool scene where Itadori like kicks a flashbang and stuff like that. Um, it's a, the fights are pretty good, but overall this scene was, eh. Oh, actually, sorry. I was one backwards on that. The flashbang was the last one. My fault. My fault. Um, they decide to go and save the soldiers anyway. Angel, it decides not to, and then does it anyway. This chapter is honestly kind of a mess, in my opinion, chapter 210, the pacing of it is a bit weird. Uh, the current, the constant cuts from like present to past, like it's not hard to keep up with, but it feels a bit messy in a way. And I, I didn't like the Itadori being like thinking that Karusu was going to replace Nobara. Like it felt, yeah, it felt a bit off. Yeah. Well, I, I will also say, though, Itadori the past couple times has seemed to be clutching on to what he can hold on to more. Like, as much as, especially now, because my man is a shirt of G, we've all been more in the Chozu camp. Like, he originally was very much pushing off on that. I think he's very much trying to push off on new people, in part also maybe because of his mindset about himself. Um, he might be uh, particularly closing himself off. And um, I don't know, I do think it makes kind of sense for him to be selfish. Mm -hmm. And also from this latest chapter, uh, as I mentioned before, um, it's important that they have some sort of dynamic in some kind of way, be it positive or negative, because it might be about to be the Karusu Itadori show for a little bit. So you need to develop that some way, positively or negatively, to get development later. Right. So right. it's we, just, it wasn't laid up front the best. So we get some Gojo and young Megumi crumbs with them revealing that mm -hmm. Megumi's uh, divine dog is the one who rescued uh, Karusu from her uh, cursed spirit kidnapping. Also interesting to note that this confirms that Megumi first tamed that dog when he was like a baby, more or less. <laughs> also, it's very cute, the, the Gojo and Megumi yeah. interaction. Yeah, I'm a yeah, big no. I'm a big fan of that. I I would love to see more uh like little shorts like this of Gojo racing Megumi yeah. and stuff. It's, it's not like that it's like, content is amazing. I yeah, love it. big fan. So then we 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 see that the reason why Karusu has chosen to go and save the soldiers anyway is because of Megumi saving her. Megumi inspired her to be a savior to people and to help the weak. And we get an awesome panel that is reminiscent of the Sistine Chapel from that. Gege has been cooking with the art recently, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And then uh, Ichidori decides to apologize to Angel. Angel shows up and says, don't you have something to say to me? And then the last panel, we get a truly groundbreaking <laughs> thing. The last panel is give solidarity is born. Also, Takaba's here. Takaba shows up and says, the last panel is mine. Breaking the fourth wall. I love this dude. I'm so excited yeah. to actually, like, see him in action. Like, his curse technique doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me with how it relates to Nanami's stuff so far. But I'm, ho like, I'm sure we'll see it in action before the end of the calling games. Like, they wouldn't just show that to us without it happening. Right? Yeah. Right. I think Gege was like, I'm going to make it kind of an anatomy thing. And then he was like, actually, I'm going to do something way more funny with it. Fuck it. Like, he's right. like, he's like, no, I don't want somebody serious. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so we're on to chapter 211, which is ripen. We have the uh, map showing the color, the merger spots, like uh, Josh mentioned. Hokkaido is left out. Um, it looks like Okinawa is not left out, though, interestingly enough. So yeah. that is. 
that's actually a pretty interesting thing to note that Hokkaido got left out, but not enough, like other islands that are off of the main island. Yeah, so that might be small too. Yeah, it might be something that comes into play because they they basically skip past it and go to an island right off the side of Hokkaido instead. Yeah, that doesn't look at least from the panel that we see, that one little edge doesn't look worth cutting off Hokkaido for uh, right. for, you know. And people will say, "Yeah, they didn't mention any special grades in Hokkaido or anything." But the whole point of JJK past a certain point is showing that like the grading system is completely meaningless and everything is going to be special grade past a certain point yeah it's arbitrary yeah. if it's, it's not special grade, it's not worth talking about really it's yeah. kind of it's kind of like also, in hunter it's... hunter how past a certain point only specialists are going to be truly broken yeah although he has yeah. gotten better about it lately but yeah and and also i will say and also it's like special grade is something you can literally become though it'd be you know, it'd be different if it's just a soft, pure, raw talent, but it's like, guys, don't worry. The people who matter will get there. Yeah. Like, Maki, I don't think he's considered a special grade or whatever, but is anyone going to tell her shit? No. Yeah, Maki like, and Toji, well, it's difficult because, like... I know, they're they're not on that scale, is my point. Well, you know, I agree with you that they could be on the scale, but to go off on a slight power scale and thing, the main issue with them is they don't have any way to deal with a domain, for the most part. Yeah. Like... Right. Their way of dealing with somebody's domain is kill them before they hit you with the sure hit, more or less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or break or bust in while they're doing it, like Toji did, and kill them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being inside of it and getting it locked down is difficult. Like, in a one-on-one -on -one fight, it won't work out for them. They need a way yeah. to deal with it. Um, yeah. Then we get a we get to see a familiar face and uh, the gentleman from the restaurant that the special grade curses met in at the beginning with ghetto where everybody got set on fire but he escaped because he was able to see what was going on he realizes that something bad is going to happen with the merger going on which is pretty interesting to me kind of you know confirming that we have people who they know what's go or they sense what is going on despite not being someone who was either either made a deal with kenjaku or got forced into it or was a sorcerer to begin with yeah, they're sensitive to it. Correct. Yeah, it's like, you know, the difference between being like a Jedi and just being Force-sensitive in Star mm -hmm. Wars or something like that. To give a shout-out to our uh, other nerd podcast, Bros Who Binge, talking about Star Wars all the time. Uh, Maki shows up, talks about how uh, Kingen captured Ten or Kenjaku ta captured Tengen-sama, and uh, Sukumo was killed in the fight even though she teamed up with both Chozo and Tengen. So um, they kinda... I, I will also... Go ahead. Sorry to cut you. Just putting no out... Just because it's part of our ongoing theory that we're all helping craft. It shows Japan again, and then shows a different angle, and purposely still cuts off Akaido. Yeah. Oh, like, I might actually so... do a little write-up about this at some point. This is interesting. Yeah. Um, Go on. Talks about how they can't really beat Kenjaku with conventional means, as far as they're aware. Which, fair... I think the only person who could possibly do something to him at this point is Gojo, and even then, like, he's still gonna be pretty banged up from having to fight somebody who's puppeting the corpse of his best friend slash boyfriend. Mm. Jazz is right, man. If he would've just went and got a shovel... No, hey, man, I mean, no, that is... It, it, that's what I'm saying. I've like... said it before on the show, but it, this, <laughs> all this that's happening is Gojo's fault for not getting rid of the body. Love respect, man. Love respect. Well, also, he did. He uh, did bury him for what it's worth. Ghetto I has a tomb. Because he... oh, it okay. confirms it in the second JGK opening. That's where he's coming from in the rain with the flowers. He's going to Ghetto's grave. Okay, but oh, okay. but brain slug Krang fucker just managed to slurp in. Yeah, and, like he probably and just... then three days later he popped out. Yeah, oh, Jesus. He probably just like was strong enough to just like fucking blast the tomb open or whatever and take the body. Yeah, um, I also will say our man Takaba can also throw hands, except not willingly, so... Yeah. You know. So they ask why the merger hasn't started yet, and sorcerers can reject the merger with cursed energy, but outside of the colonies, the merger mm -hmm. has already begun. People are falling ill, and but overall, so like vulnerable people have fallen ill, so your elderly, immunocompromised people, but overall Japan is functioning fine, so it's going kind of slow. And then they decide they need to focus on Sumiki first, 
and they're kind of wondering uh, why they haven't added rules yet, but they already decided what rules to add. And so they're going to go meet up with Sumiki and try to get her out of there and then figure out where to go from there, more or less. Um, we also have a nice little panel of our boy Chozo um, regretting everything. Regretting everything that he's ever done, it seems like, while holding a weird little sponge. Yeah, like or, a, a brick or something like that. Yeah, I don't like quite know what that's supposed like to be. Type. <laughs> yeah, like a stress square. Like a little yeah, foam. Yeah. It might be like a yoga yeah. it might be like a yoga thing, kinda. Yeah. Um looking immaculate, because as we mentioned, uh Gege has a new favorite, and it's hard to argue. Yeah, Gege is, loves this man. Yeah. Every time you see Chozo drawn, there's just like Gege is not a bad art or uh, artist, but he puts so much more effort into drawing Gojo, even though he hates the man. He knows he has to draw him sexy. <laughs> he puts so yeah. much more effort into drawing Gojo and Chozo in particular than everybody else. And I, for Chozo, it feels like he legitimately likes him, even though you know he puts him through the ringer. Yeah, for marketing and... purposes, he's yeah, just like, hey, uh. I got these two characters. Which one should I prioritize? And they're just like the the white haired one for now. But we 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 like this guy, right? Do him later. <laughs> whatever. Right. We, whatever we're gonna get the Chozo marketable plushie, also the Chozo uh, body pillow. Um, but and also I will say, um, I get it though, because mad respect to Chozo. Ever since um, he and uh, our fave girl were fucking kicking shit in whenever it came to taking on Kenny. Um, and then she has her panel of saying, I like the hard path, I like rugged men, and then suddenly just hexagon grin out of nowhere, Jojo posing with his blood, ready to, like, actually do something. Pouncing I've like a, a jaguar. Pouncing, pouncing like a fucking jaguar out of the wall, mm -hmm. bro. It right. was awesome. <laughs> it, it's some of the, like, rawest manga I've, panels I've seen in a minute. Yeah, especially from Weekly Shonen Jump. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, 100%. We've got... Angel mentioning that she actually can le freely leave the colonies if she wants to. It's just difficult because she has to find the foundation of the barrier technique. Something to keep in our mind for later. I think that this is going to be a thing that comes up. That's not something you just mention if it's not going to be relevant later. Uh, so then, let's see, we've got... They talk about how they... They're wondering why they haven't added the rules yet... <laughs> Because and it's mostly because they have like current forms of outside communication and means to like bypass the rules they haven't added yet, more or less. Like they have ways to use the rules without actually adding them so far. So their first priority they decide is uh, the fourth rule they want to add, which is with being able to withdraw from the culling game. So Megumi tries to add a rule that players can withdraw from the culling game. Kogane rejects it, which they kind of expected that, that would happen. And then he tries to rules lawyer it. The most annoying person to be a game master for, by the way, is this type of fucking guy, Megumi, right here. Where he says, a player may withdraw from the culling game by inventing a new player from outside the colony as a substitute. And Kogane rejects that as well. And then he asked, or Itsuri asked, then how do we withdraw from the culling game? And then Kogane has a proposal. A player may withdraw from the culling game by inviting a new player from outside the colony as a substitute and spending 100 points. And um, then Ichidori says that's no problem. <laughs> in a... <laughs> yeah. In a Kansai dialect. Which is funny to me. Just them slipping into, like, country just draws and ahead. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Megumi, like, Megumi Hold has, on now, Itadori. You yeah, can't be doing that. Megumi has an issue because it doesn't change the number of players in the culling games, basically. So, yeah. They kind of... Um, go. They, they don't have any room to negotiate further. And they add... Uh, they decide to just add that rule to the culling game. That a player can withdraw by inviting a new player from outside the colony and spending 100 points. Yeah, like... Megami trying to rules lawyer and being a shit player for the good side. Uh, Kiragane is the worst gun in DM, where it's like, okay, I hear your argument, and there's no logical reason why it can't be that way, but I'm still telling you no, and I'm going to charge you for it. 
Like, oh, man, I don't know. I was kind of looking for like they have a literal lawyer on their side who probably could have argued with Karagane all day, but Kenny's still behind the scenes somewhere, like a little bit of hens instead of Karagane being like, "Listen, I know I'm not the best rule maker ever, so I'm just gonna reserve the right to tell you no." Yeah. Yeah. So they decide so, to get Sumiki in there. They're gonna give her the 100 points and find a substitute for her so she can leave. Mm-hmm. And. They send Maki, because since Maki has no curse energy, she can just freely leave and the barrier whenever she wants. <laughs> they tell her to bring a parachute because it's Fortnite up in this bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we get back, uh, we go back to uh, Sumiki and Ijichi. Uh, Maki is there as well. And they decide to, uh, they're going to put each. I- that what they're going to do? They're going to put Ijichi into the... Yeah, Ijichi is going to take her place in the Cullen yeah. games, which... Uh, He's going to do a hot swap. Right. Not a good... I. N- well, maybe Gege takes this time to show us that Ijichi is with the shits, actually. Yeah. Well, also, it's it's substituting one bad thing for another, because if she doesn't get out, um, her cursed uh, technique She'll die anyway. Damn well kill her. Yeah. So, you know. Right. It, it's like... You know, you're putting in someone who's like a C, like a C minus or whatever, but she's like an F. So, you know, and also I would love it if in the background this whole time he's been like working on his shit a little bit here and there the whole time, you know, like right. I think that would be awesome. But, you know. Ijichi mentions that uh, back when he was a student, he wanted to be a sorcerer and we get more Gojo crumbs. You know, it's in something here. We're getting a lot of go. Mm-hmm. We're getting more Gojo in the past two chapters than we had in like over nine hundred days or something like that. Yeah, we haven't had Gojo for like what the past like two three years. Yeah, yeah. Gojo, Gojo <laughs> spotted. Correct. We had a Gojo sighting. He's like, I should give them something since I'm about to traumatize them. Right. For a couple chapters. <laughs> so Gojo shows up, young Gojo, wearing his glasses and stuff, and he tells Yujiji, "Quit being a sorcerer. You're more useless than shit." Hurry up and get a driver's license. The manual kind. And if you say no, I'll slap the shit out of you. Which is just goaded behavior. I love that shit. That, it, it, it made me grin. It made me, like, I had a gigantic grin on my face. Gege has been catering to me specifically between this and the new volume cover. <laughs> and to anybody who needs more proof that Gojo is a homosexual man, he literally told another man to go get a driver's license because he couldn't be bothered to learn how to drive. Yeah. All right. He's, a, he's really just a passenger princess. That's yeah. I, like I, I see what you are. I don't, <laughs> I don't need the heavenly eyes to see what you are, Go- Satoru Gojo. I bet Gojo doesn't even let Ijichi run the ox cord. Like, you already, yeah. you already know he's listening to like Avicii or some shit like that. Mm. Full blast. <laughs> you just thinking of Kenjaku being like, "Hey, brother." <laughs> Okay, and then we got, uh, they sh- Sumiki actually shows up. She gets, uh, warped there pretty easily, it seems. Like, it doesn't seem like there's very much, uh, stress. It seems like she didn't even really use her, uh, parachute there, looking like. Yeah, curious. Weird. Wonder why. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah. So she gets lucky on that. They decide to add a rule. They introduce her to Caruso. And say that she's been keeping watch this whole time, just in case you follow this guy. Caruso gives him a nod and says, "Nice, Isidori, raise my stock." Which I I love that little interaction, like, yeah, them it that's some Toradora shit, kinda like them trying to just raise yeah. their stock in other people, even though, you know, Isidori doesn't care about that sort of thing anymore. I hope his little girlfriend is okay, by the way. That the it's like that. Oh, girl. the one that we met. Yeah, the one that we met before. Yeah, story. Yeah. yeah. I pray. I, she's I okay. pray she's doing okay. Probably let, not. Let Yuji, let no, Yuji have. Probably yeah, not. Let Yuji have. Let Yuji have something after this, please. Yeah. Dude, we can we can probably see her back. I mean, we saw his classmate come back and then didn't really do anything with him. So, you know, maybe. Yep. So uh, Megumi wants to finish up quickly. He gives uh, Sumiki the one hundred points. And Kogane, at, she says, Kogane, at a rule, please allow free entry and exit from the colonies to the shock of literally everybody. And then Megumi realizes that that is not his sister. <laughs> and 
and thus is the beginning of yeah. of 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 the terror of the one-eyed cat that is gay gay yeah he, he really did it to him <laughs> Chapter 212, we start off with a flashback of Megumi talking, like, Megumi talking to her when she first woke up, explaining the situation and stuff like that. It ends with her, like, kind of laughing at him suspiciously. And, uh, you know, we had the rules, we've got Itadori kind of questioning, like, damn, if I was, if I wasn't here, would things have just not gone this way? Like, would everybody have just been okay? Would Gojo have been able to, you know solve everything without me he's accepted his death from angel at this point yeah. but he's thankful to megumi and for shigeru for for shigeru for giving him a role to play yeah and you really got to feel for our boy because like like uh like we've talked about before and like i'm sure anyone worth their salt when it comes to jjk has talked about like we got to keep in mind each of doors entire quest this whole time has been finding not necessarily a life worth living or even a good life it's been finding a good death because that's what his grandpa told him and that's what he was warned about whenever it came to becoming a sorcerer it was like just so you know most sorcerers die in a ditch somewhere cold alone and scared because they got owned by a spirit they couldn't handle right you know <laughs> like so even just having friends by his side while he basically commits suicide um like death by angel cop is you know whenever it comes to how things could go that's a pretty big win for him Right. Um, but obviously, Megami and the crew would never fucking allow that. So, uh, you know, we got uh, Megami questioning who this person is, and this panel is just fantastic. We got the font is great for it, just the typesetting, all that. We got a classic Gege slash kind of Horikoshi panel with like the wide open mouth laughing at somebody, big teeth. Love it, love it, love it, love it. The menace lines and uh, uh, like the spread out menace lines from her, and then right next to her, the depression scared lines, like straight uniform coming down from our boy uh, Fushiguro. Yeah, so kind of like how most of the text isn't like all the way filled in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is it's almost like, like it was scraped ink. on. Yeah, yeah. And then we get information that an incarnated receives information about the modern era from the vessel's brain. That's why Chozo, Sukuna, and the incarnated players are able to function in the modern era. And uh, if so, reading the vessel's memories and impersonating the vessel should be entirely possible. And Megumi is... He's really beating himself up because he's like, why did I assume that Sumiki was awakened instead of incarnated? Mm -hmm. And Sumiki says, just kidding. I am Yorozo. Maybe the old guys still remember me. Don't get anything about that in this chapter. Probably, I assume we will ne get some backstory next chapter, probably. And then uh, he wonders why, why the, this person would do this. And she's like, well, you're the one who told me about everything that was going on. And you offered me a hundred free points, so I'm going to take that shit. I want my <laughs> first battle in a thousand years to be Sukuna. So I'm going to go do that. Grow some Just insect scared. wings and flies off. Just toodaloo and I'll be waiting. Itadori and Angel give chase. And then we get the moment that we've been waiting for for literally 200 chapters since chapter 15. Itadori's cheek mouth opens up and says, in chain. So there are two conditions. First, when I chant in chain, you will lend me your body for one minute. And second, you will forget about this contract. These were the terms that Sukuna gave Itadori in chapter 15, all, way back when. He quickly grabs Angel and uh, uh, knocks her out to where she can't, you know, erase him, more or less. And then, uh, or stop what he's about to do, and explains his binding vow to everybody else. And then he says the next thing he's going to do is going to be a gamble. He's, we see him putting his cursed energy into Itadori's right pinky. Got some amazing uh, flame sort of hatching slash pixel art going on in one of the panels. Also, just excellent paneling, too, mm -hmm. with the way the right. hand, like, goes from that. one goes panel up. into yeah. the other one, and it's like a diagonal slice on the page. You you don't have paneling like that going on in, in Weekly Shonen Jump right now, a lot of the time, I feel. And then he rips off his pinky... And mentions how, uh, like, he sees that he could do it without anything happening to him. And, uh, he has a laugh 
about how it was a binding vow not to hurt anyone, but Itsudori did not include himself. Because mm-hmm, of the self-reflection. Right. Megumi uh, reacts very quickly, realizing it's Sukuna, and attempts to do the Mahorga summon, which he always does anytime a slight amount of pressure is on him. Yeah. <laughs> Every time his favorite sports team's losing by, like, ten points, he's like, look, yeah. if I just summon Mahorga, the Saints will win a Super Bowl. <laughs> Yeah, if this series was any longer, I'd I'd literally compare Megumi doing this to Renji pulling out his Bankai every time he's in trouble. <laughs> Just the first thing he goes to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He gets speed blitzed by uh, Sukuna pretty easily. No surprise there. His hand seal is broken. Sukuna yanks his mouth open and shoves the finger in and makes him swallow it. You know, like you're giving a dog a weenie with some medication that you gotta, you gotta like stroke their throat a little bit and make the gag reflex. And the, yeah, that, so if you don't know how to give medication to a dog, by the way, you're welcome. This is an educational podcast. Um, yeah. Also, if you're ever in a spat with your lover and you just grab them by the, the face and spit in their mouth, which is, I think, what Second has been planning for the last 200 chapters ever since he was like, Megami's kind of that dude. So then uh, we see Itadori. No comment on that, boys? No, nope, no comment on that. We're moving past it. I'm going I'm to let you rock with that one. That was a jazz-type beat, honestly. Uh, that was even a little much for me. <laughs> you know how crazy it has to be for jazz to tell you to calm it down? Look, look, it's like a domain expansion, all right? I only pull it out when I really need it. Unlike Megami. Yeah. He pulls it out at a moment's That's okay. notice. This is great. We see Itadori blank-faced and surprised. Uh, Megumi looks to be okay, not injured. But then we get a panel of his face, and we notice the telltale symbols. The next panel, we see it fully. He has been uh, incarnated, or Sukuna has incarnated in Megumi, and his tattoos and eyes and everything are all on him. This is crazy to me, honestly, because... I don't know, well, based on... Kinjaku, we know that he is going to have Megumi's curse technique. I think we can assume that. He will have access yeah. to that because of the the whole body and soul stuff they go on right now. What do we think that like the major fan theory is obviously that Sukuna is going to like use Megumi's technique to make himself a new body. That's what I've seen he, a lot of people saying. For me it's like he's only five fingers away from me or did that by himself, right? Yeah, and yeah, it seems like he sense. did. It seems like he does respect Megami. Like I don't, I think he actually likes Megami, not necessarily so much needing a shadow user. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm fine with it. If that's how it ends up going, especially because it means Megami probably has at least a shot of getting out of this. But it's kind of but, you're saying it's more like a hermit crab situation. Yeah, I think he. I think well, that my the, the question I posed to you before we started this is how much of this is Megami hype, and how much of this is. I really, really, really want to make Yuji uh, sad. A little and bit this of column a, million... a little bit of column B. Yeah, and this is way, like, because whenever I first talked about Jazz before the leaks happened, I was like, I theorized that Sekuno was going to activate the body swap thing, and he was literally going to make uh, Yuji stand still for, like, a minute while he allowed something to happen. You know, but this is almost worse, where he's like, hey, you know, um... This is the best way I can think of with fucking with you. Last time I just refused to heal one of your friends. This time I'm just taking him. Right. And, you know, you know, we're just going to do this from now on. So, it, so after the binding bow is done, I assume Sukuna will still be in Megumi's body. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he'll be able to hurt people. So if mm-hmm. I was them, I would probably just kind of focus on getting the fuck away from him in that minute yeah. of time. They probably got what, like, 45 seconds left or something like that uh yeah, yeah. Getting... depending on what megami's threshold is for sakuna because i don't think he's built for it like yuji is no definitely not he doesn't have that death so... wound painting physiology to him yeah they're gonna um... have, we're gonna get the gojo sakuna rematch soon yeah and i just oh, it's tough because i don't see one of them is not making out of that shit alive or both of them like, there's yeah. no way both of them make it out of it alive. The worst part about it is I went back to I went back to earlier chapters and like you could kind of you could kind of see the foreshadowing because like in Me- like when Megumi was in high school, 
he was literally sitting on a pile of bodies like how sakuna does and then like in one of the in like one of the art like Books. his yeah they have Go-Go. yeah his frog has the has the uh little markings on it eyes, yeah. yeah yeah and then and he has he's versing gojo in that too where all the other ones yeah are like and then the worst thing the worst thing about it is uh the, the worst thing i found was before megumi i think before megumi pops his domain for the first time gojo's he he has like a flashback to gojo talking to him and he's like oh yeah like back in the day like the the head of the gojo in the zenin clan went at it you know it was a Limitless uh, six eyes user like me, and a ten shadows user like you. He's like, so you get what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah. You can and like, I just that. thought, I just thought that was him comparing power, like g- giving Megami a ceiling. And I'm like, oh lord, we're actually gonna see it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Do you think Gojo has it in him to put Megami into a red smear before? Uh, he can do it. I think Gojo like is. I think Gojo is capable of just disabling him though. With like, Gojo has shown he can control how long he uses infinite void for to just knock people out. Yeah, but that yeah. would be kind of anticlimactic. So I think that it would probably end with Gojo sacrificing his life to save Megumi as well. And I don't know. Um, so, I mean, Sukuna is the Sukuna is the big bad at the end of the series. Yes, the they, like I said, yeah. uh, he called a shot. Those are the two one cons. Sadoro Gojo must be kept down. Sukuna must either not interfere or come to our side. Those yeah. are the win cons. Uh, Gage called a shot literally a thousand years ago. Right. Um, speaking of which, uh, so I assume we can all agree he put all of his uh, his dirty little fingies into that one finger, like. So Yuji is currently holding zero fingers, and this Megami body has fifteen. I don't know. Um, I I think there's a good chance that he didn't do that, and we just like maybe some of them, but not all of them. And he's just yeah. gonna eat. He's just gonna try and eat Itadori to get the rest of them, more or less. Because well, Sukuna is literally isn't it, a yeah. Isn't it canon? Isn't yeah, it canon that like it's he it. eats people. Yeah, in the fan book, they mention yeah. that he does in fact eat human beings. Yeah, he's a cannibal chef. That's his. Yeah, and his, his little twink monk is a free is an actual <laughs> freezer. So, <laughs> also the also another funny thing. Well, I mean not funny because this isn't the funny situation, but it's funny because <laughs> it's like kind of funny. But it's funny because like so Kenjaku probably wasn't calculating Sakuna to do this, so he's probably gonna come back and be like, "So then why was I Yuji's mom?" Yeah, he's really gonna like yeah, reflect like, on it and be like, "Wait a minute!" Kissed and tell. I'll be like, "Dude, I gave you a perfect vessel. It looks just like you. <laughs> like, why do I even have to do that then? Why do I have to put it on pause?" He's gonna be like, "Man, like, you you, may, you realize that I had to have sex with a normal dude for this." He's gonna hit like, the um nine months. <laughs> he's gonna hit the fucking uh, what the Green Goblin from Spider Man, where he's like. <laughs> You know how much you know how much I've sacrificed. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would like to like... see them fight on it. Like it would be cool. Yeah, honestly, a let them fight moment in the next couple chapters where it's Kenjaku versus Sukuna, and they both kind of like turf war it to do think... some monster in terms, and then like limp away a bit. Nobody yeah, truly I... winning would yeah, be sick. Yeah. I think they kind of have to because I don't think either one is in a position where they want to be right now, and. I think they are both working towards not necessarily completely opposite ends, but let's face it. Kenjaku wants to do his little nuke thing and make it a whole thing. Uh, Sekunder just wants his body back and to go back to like how things were. I don't think that those two plans are necessarily clashing against each other, but also it's like you said, like they're the two big dogs. Them and Gojo. You get Keep the three in, my... in the room. Sorry, go, go ahead. I was just saying, like they're the three big dogs, like... You put all three of them in a room, like, they're not going to come out animically like homies. They are going to fight. Yeah. And because on some level, I mean, look at all these old heads who want to fight Sekuno. Like, everyone just wants to fight. That's all they want to do. They just want to throw hands all day. That's actually That's what, what I was going to bring up, though, is Kashimo in this. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is mm-hmm. a good chance for us to have, like, a fo- like kind of like what was going on with Yuta in the Sendai colony, where we have... a. Uh, mm-hmm. Like a four or five way fight between incarnated sorcerers, all trying to get at Sakuna and keep other people from stealing their kills. Yeah, I think that would yeah being like that boy's mine. No, that boy's mine. You know, and like 
It's just a bunch of old people who aren't actually there, just like uh, throwing hands with each other. You know. Um, yeah. So, do you, like, do you, is Sekuna even gonna, like, try and fuck with Yuji right now, or is he gonna leave, like, how Dragonfly Lady did? Like, I think he might f- I, fuck with Yuji I think he a might bit fuck. more. It's, yeah. He really yeah, hates that, that dude. Yeah, yeah but is the timer still going, going off? Yeah. Oh. Mm. No, he's not gonna kill him or anything. Yeah. Nah. So he, this is where Ijichi will show up and stop Sukuna. Yeah. I need that. <laughs> or uh, to uh, Takaba. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. Takaba's like, man, chill out. And Sukuna just freezes and they can get away. Yeah. So let me give you guys a theory that I have. So you remember how when Yuji died the first time, Megumi and Nobara hated the fact that they like just sprung it on them like that? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. What if... What if Nobara is fine this whole time and she's going to pop up randomly in three after three months <laughs> and be like... And Megumi is in on it too. And they're going to be like, and that's why you don't fake your own death. How does it feel? <laughs> like, what I'd if they're really it. just fucking with him this whole time? Whatever it takes. And, to and motivate. Back. Also, I could see Fushiguro doing it to motivate Itadori, too, is the thing. Yeah. This, yeah. This, yeah. That would, that would really just turn into, like, this wouldn't be JJK anymore. It would just be, like, reasons why Yuji Itadori needs therapy. Yeah, literally everybody like, but Gojo manipulating you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think even Gojo does a little bit. Okay, but... everybody but Maki. Maki never manipulated Ishidori. He, she's, yeah, she's, she's never, a bug. She, <laughs> she doesn't she, really care. Well, she's Old like, you're, Maki, you are Yuta. Like... Get out of yeah. here. You're not my MC. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she, Maki, the number one Yuta stan. Yeah, 100%. Yep. She... Whenever he said Hikari was stronger, she was like, nah. Nah. Absolutely. Nah. She, she hit the power scaling forums and she was like, respect Thread. <laughs> Yuta. Respect Yuta Okatsu. <laughs> Man. Also, while we're at it, bring fucking Toto and Fishblake back, too. Man, like, uh, br- bring in all the soldiers. We are on the Megami retrieval arc, alright? Just, look, he's the Sasuke analog, although he's better than Sasuke. So we knew we were gonna have to do a retrieval arc at some point. This is just that. Yeah. All right. We're That's gonna have to it. face the Sound Four, which are just all the old guys who are in legion with Sekuno. That way they can get their one fight, which they'll completely get their ass blown out. I'm wondering yeah. what beef they have with Sukuna like this. Like I know he was like a problem back then, but I'm like, damn. Everybody that comes across him has, or everybody that's like the main cast has come across is like. I'm saving this for Sakuna. Like, I want to fight Sakuna, and it's just they're like just, you. Jazz, I wonder. You, just you're like heads. Jazz. I wonder what Sakuna did. Sakuna, fuck your homie. He dead. Fuck your homie. He dead. <laughs> fuck your homie. He dead. Most of the ops got shot in the head. <laughs> yeah. Also, Jazz. Like, Fair. he he's literally like he's just they're just old heads, and they don't respect the new the new generation at all, dude. Honestly, they're a lot like uh the big three stands where they're just like. You know, everyone's still having fights for a uh, series that are long over or almost over. Meanwhile, the Nugens over here, like, our sales are something to respect. Like, they, they don't they don't respect Nobara yeah, Ma- or Yuji like, or any of them. Yeah, they're like, yeah, Mangaka are doing something cool. But I'm like, did you know that they took that from Naruto? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude. Also, I brought this up. Also, I brought this up to a version earlier this week. And I was like, you know what? I think... I think Gege and Fujimoto, like, saw that Sasuke got away with too much shit in Naruto. So their way of doing shit was just like, okay. Let's just torture let's just our take, Sasuke analogs. Yeah, let's just torture our emo boys. That way yeah. we can make up for Sasuke's crimes. Well, they are probably like, what if we did less Sasuke and more Karapika slash Kilua instead? Yeah. 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 God. So I think that about so, wraps it up for our uh, review of the last few chapters of JJK. Um, amazing chapter, chapter 212. I'm so excited to see it hit the official app. And I'm really excited to see where 213 goes. Honestly, I'm going to mute the tags for 213 so I can just experience... I mean, I'm still going to read it when it leaks, but, like, when the full scans come out, rather. But I want to avoid the, like, rough, raw leaks 
that I saw this time because I got like the whole last panel yeah. spoiled for me. And yeah. So. yeah, that shit was disgusting. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't seen like yeah, people too I'm, loose with it. Like it was trending. Yeah. Like cause um, normally I'm, like for one piece like like I'll see leaks all the time and mm-hmm. I like won't care. But this one was like one that I was actually kind of pissed about because like I just got hit with it on Twitter. It was just yeah. boom, last page. I was like, damn. Well a lot of times I'll see leaks and it's like text version. Like people throw around and be like, Oh, Luffy's mom is showing up or whatever, blah blah. This is just like, hey, here's the full last panel, the most important part that you really want to see. And something yeah. that's so clear that, like, in crisp, you couldn't not understand it just by looking at it. Yeah. Um, I did want to pause you guys a question as, like, our last discussion point. And this is just a hero shot, wild mask guessing. Um, how, because of bringing it all back around and him saying you want to end it in a year, how many chapters left do you think are in JJK? Like, oh. you know, and you can just go with your heart. You don't have to be whatever, but just. So we've had what, like. Gut shot. This is what issue six of Weekly Shonen Jump this year, I think five or six. Uh, I'll probably take at least one or two breaks. So we have, I would give it like thirty-five, forty chapters left. Okay, so you think he's yeah. real I, about the the? Year I believe time. I believe him after that, if not barely above mm-hmm. that. I'll give him some leeway, and I'll say uh, possibly. I'll give a chapter number. I can't give, like, chapters, but, like... Yeah, I was gonna say, like your frame, Jonathan, uh, sorry, Jay, I think, puts you at about, like, like, what, 250? Yeah. It puts me at, like, 257 at most, about. Yeah. I'd say at least 260... I'd say at least, like, 265, but giving him leeway, like, 275, but that would be, like, him reaching into next year. But I know he said he doesn't want to do that, so I'd probably say, like, 260-ish? Yeah. Uh, what about you? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 269 just because it's a funny number. Fair enough. And Fair also, enough. I'm also I'm I'm putting it out into the future. I am wishing for it. I hope he takes as long as he wants because I do understand and I respect a mangaka who knows like how to get their story in and out and want to do something different. At the same time, though, I feel like the last couple times I've read a uh, manga where someone was trying to hit either an arbitrary goal. Or they were like, I'm finishing it on my terms. I think they actually could have let that bitch cook a couple a couple more chapters. Like, I don't know, B-Star, I love it. But it, it, it they could have at least done, like, two more chapters and I think it would have been more fulfilled. I like the Golden Kamui uh, ending, but I think it also could have had a little bit more time to cook. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, it. I'll give them a little bit more room, even if, like, you know. I, I will say this. I think if it does carry on to next year, I think we're pretty much going to be wrapping it. Gotcha. Yeah, like that's probably like last five, seven mm-hmm. chapters, probably. I'd say. Agreed. Well, hey, that wraps it up for this review of the uh, JJK chapter two twelve. This will be going out on the main feed, hopefully shortly after the chapter releases, so you guys can see that. Uh, Jazz, why don't you tell the people where they can find you and uh, anything else you might want to plug that you're up to. Yeah, so you, you can find me on Twitter at Real Jazzy Boy. You can find me on Instagram, Jazzy Boy. You can follow me on TikTok. His Cornell TikToks, the God. His TikToks hit. They're great. They're doing it. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little funny. You know what I'm saying? We, you know what I'm saying? We, we do some, we do some stuff over there. And also, I just dropped a theory about everyone's favorite swordsman, Dracula Mihawk, and that is on my YouTube right now. So if you, you know, if you like One Piece, if you like crazy, crazy thought processes, you know, go check that out. Word. And what about you, Josh? Where can, you got anything you want to plug? Any place you want people to find you? Oh, uh, well, I will take Umbridge. Uh, my favorite swordsman is Bones uh, Brook. That's my boy. That's that's the best swordsman in all of One Piece. Oh, I, was, I was just but... generalizing people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, me, you know. me, I'm, a, I'm a Vista man, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone loves Vista. Top Please. one in the verse. Ke- anyway, uh, Kiku no. is top one, actually. You are correct, actually. That's why That's Mihawk actually. didn't show up to uh, Wano. He was afraid of dealing with real swordsmen. Yeah. Speaking of which, by the way, Jazz, just real quick, like two seconds. Um, Bro, the reason why Mihawk never went to Wano is because at some point he was just like, listen, anyone who wants to claim great swordsmen is just going to have to come to me. He's lazy. Lazy as fuck. All right? That's oh, why. Bro, he- 
He's yeah. so lazy. I told somebody a comparison. I was like, that's like somebody overseas saying they're the best basketball player in the mm-hmm. world, but has never played in the NBA. Yeah, I'm the best chef in the world, but if you want to challenge me, though, you have to come to my restaurant. I won't ever fly out to you. Yeah, so, you know. Your plugs, Josh. Your plugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. One piece. Anyway. <laughs> it was the one piece. It's what it's what I know. Uh, but yeah, uh, so my plugs, uh, Josh Shoskler. You can find me under my real name pretty much wherever. Uh, also, though, um, if you want to find me specifically on Twitter, I'm Versing the Vassal. Um, I do One Piece reviews with Jazz and um, our boy Lynn. Um, and also my personal work, I do a lot of activism, mostly local stuff, though. But if you are local, um, one, let's link up, let's connect, and uh, let's do some good work together for our community, especially when it comes to housing justice and uh, climate change activism. That's uh, local to the um, southwestern Louisiana area, by the way. Yeah. Maybe mostly, much... mostly southern Louisiana in general. Yeah, so yeah, southwestern they, would be best. <laughs> they got they got me running pretty much around the whole coast. So if you're from the Texas border all the way down to New Orleans, pretty much along that stretch, I I will help you with something if you ask me to. Yep. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to find me, you can find me at on Twitter, either at the Manga Melee Pod, all one word, or you can find me at, at Shardbase on Twitter. That's at Shard as in a shard of glass, and at Based as in Lil B, the Based God. And uh, you can't really find me anywhere else because I mostly do not want to be perceived. Um, thanks for listening, guys, and I think that'll just about do it for us. We should have another episode of Manga Melee coming out this week. I'm not quite sure who I'm recording that with yet, but I'll have a uh, review of the Poppy Wars ready for that. And I might have a review of a new sports anime or manga I've been reading. So be on the lookout for that. It should be releasing on the usual channels on uh, Thursday or Friday. Thank you so much for listening. This has been the Manga Melee Podcast, and have a great week. Peace!